Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Um, you have my name there, uh, and as you see, I come from ECMWF representing the Copernicus Climate Change Service. We were invited to give a talk with the title you see up there. Um, and for those of you who wonder why that might be the case, why the Copernicus Climate Change Service might be talking about seasonal forecasting at ECMWF, uh, I will um, try to to explain about the full range of activities that happen at ECMWF under the, the uh, name of seasonal forecasting. Um, and I hope you will forgive me for using this particular template instead of the one you used. I thought this was a more appropriate way to frame the conversation. Um, for more than 15 years, ECMWF have produced uh, to an operational scheduled seasonal forecast for the member states. They have always used the state-of-the-art forecasting system um, initialized with observations um, and um, has used a great deal of computing power to create these forecasts. In addition to producing their own forecasts, ECMWF has been leading a few international projects on coordinating multi-model comparisons and operational setups, culminating uh, two, three years ago with the um, setup of a service for seasonal forecasts under the Copernicus Climate Change Service. So I intend to start by sticking to the title. I, I use the vague ambiguity in a, in a, in a title presented to, as an opportunity to, to talk a bit more about things that ECMWF does with other centers. But I will start with um, the in-house activities, which um, constitute the best example I have today uh, of use of CMAMS products to try and keep at least um, a little with... Um, with the topic of this session. Uh, but then I want to tell you a bit more about the Copernicus Climate Change Services seasonal forecast component in the hope that either we identify synergies uh, or indeed um, you notice uses of, of CMAMS products uh, that I may have overlooked. Um, I ought to own up at the beginning, I'm not an oceanographer, I have had very little to do with ocean modeling or forecasting, so uh, forgive my... Um, superficial approach to this in places. Uh, I will start with a, with a part uh, put together by my colleagues, Magdalena Balmaceda, Hao Zhu, and Tim Stockdale, who have worked at ECMW for many years on developing the seasonal forecast system. Um, uh, but I have to take a step back because at ECMWF, the forecasting activities are um, driven by a principle, a strategy of seamlessness. Here I'm talking about seamlessness in the tools that are being used. So for all forecast, this is not going well. Uh, for all, uh, do I have a pointer here somewhere? Um, anyway, uh, at the bottom of the slide, you see uh, the, the, the main features of the seasonal forecast system. At, in the top left-hand corner, the components of the model, the forecast system used, are described. It is a coupled ocean atmosphere model with components of land, waves, sea ice. Um, all these components are initialized with observations. So here, the use of observations and data products comes in very clearly. Um, but the point is that, that the same system with the same initial conditions are used of, is used for different lead times. Uh, the difference comes in um, the resolution um, according to lead time, clearly, because the cost becomes prohibitive as you go further into the future. Um, clearly, there are advantages to this uh, approach. Um, but for a full picture, here is the description of the range of forecasts that are produced, uh, medium range forecasts that are produced twice a day, forecasts stretching about six weeks ahead are produced twice a week, um, seasonal forecasts covering seven months, once a month, uh, and forecasts going beyond a, uh, a season or two seasons to more than a year, four times a year. Now, um, clearly, because of this and because of the... Uh, Similarities and the commonality of model for all time scales. The ocean uh, processes are important, and the ocean is now coupled to the atmosphere from the very first day of the forecast. So the ocean and sea ice model components are an integral part of the forecast system from weather time scales to longer. Seasonal in particular is described here, and the next forecast system for seasonal time scales is going to be known as Seas 5 from the former System 5 or System 4, as it was before. And this table is presented as a comparison uh, with a previous uh, version, which was, became operational in 2011 and will stop being the operational version in another month or two. It um, clearly uses the atmosphere and ocean components that 
um, it um, uses for other time scales, as I said. And in terms of models, uh, there is no dramatic change. There is a, a change in, a, in the configuration of NEMA being used and in the uh, resolution, as you can see in a table. A sea ice model uh, is being added for the first time. Um, some other changes that you can see there um, also will occur, but the one that's probably most important here, the ocean initialization will use a different product. Um, the one known as Aura S4 will be replaced by a newer one, which is created with the same version of the model as uh, the one to be used in um, forecast mode. The ensemble size to be, um, which will be used is the same as it was before, 51 ensemble members for each forecast. Uh, the reforecasts will, though, be bigger, um, and the period for calibration and the period for which reforecasts will be available will be longer. It's um, maybe important to point this out because the reforecast data sets are a good resource of historical evolution of um, uh, the, the, the system, uh, which could be used for various purposes, not just for the calibration of the forecast system or the uh, verification of its performance. Just a, a simple example about the improvements we've noticed um, so far in the um, performance with system five, with CS5. Um, and I'm here only looking at uh, El Nino. As you probably know, if you're familiar with long range forecasts or will be uh, pleased to find out, uh, seasonal forecasts do not get used the same way as weather forecasts. And here you can see in the top left hand corner, the blue lines show the evolution of the um, particular parameter, the Nino 3.4 uh, index, which is an area average sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, and you can see that starting from the beginning of the forecast, uh, the model starts to behave very differently from observations, which are shown in black. Um, that's not fatal in seasonal forecasts because the reforecast set is being used for calibration and the information you get from a reforecast set allow correction of the forecast to be made so that forecasts for this particular parameter are really very skillful. Correlations are above 0.8. Uh, for most times of year. Uh, but the mean climate, the mean model um, behavior, the, the, the mean climate of the model is clearly very different from real world. In blue, we have system four. In the red, we have CS5. So these biases, these systematic differences have re reduced. Uh, the skill has increased a little as well. Um, although, as I said, once you know the bias and you remove it, uh, the skill is, wasn't, wasn't terribly bad to start with. Um, also here, the mean square skill score which is um, a mean square error type thing, uh, has gone. No, mean square skill score is a positively orientated thing, so it's gone up. It's, it's, it's all good. Um, but to get back to the point, what uh, ocean uh, data do we use for these forecasts? Uh, ocean observations. Uh, these are the, the types of observations that are being um, assimilated. Uh, profile of temperature and salinity, Argo, uh, moorings, and the other elements, the other instruments uh, listed there. Satellite products are also being used, satellite products from CMAMS, um, level three and level four, um, as are SST um, satellite products for sea level and as are SST products. Now, there are some planned changes to the SST products used, which are listed there. To conclude, the connections with CMAMS uh, for ECMWF zone model uh, are listed at the top in the blue box. Uh, and as you can see from our latest newsletter or recent newsletter uh, agreement on, uh, on using the data systematically or making use of the product has been uh, used, uh, reached, struck and documented in this document. Briefly about the C3S seasonal forecasts, um, aiming to generate a multi-model combination of forecasts from centers in Europe um, we have contracted five providers. Three of them were contracted for immediate use in 2016. Two others to develop their capabilities to become uh, full contributors in 2017. Uh, you have them there. Um, to uh, achieve this standard of, uh, of operations, so to create... Uh, to, to offer for the multimodal combination and product generation data on one degree uh, resolution, uh, including ocean data, a very high temporal resolution for some of the variables uh, to, to provide forecasts and hindcasts. Uh, and we specified the period which had to be covered by the hindcasts. Uh, I, I refer to these as hindcasts here as um, is the same thing as reforecasts I, I mentioned earlier. 
Um, and this is, uh, the, we've set an operational schedule for which this has to become available. For those who want to use these things, there is some information on the slides about the changes that will come in with the next phase. Currently we are somewhere between the proof of concept and pre-operational phase in the sense that the deadlines are those of the proof of concept phase, but the commitment to uh, delivering things on time and on schedule uh, and to, 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 um, to the designed um, uh, list of products is already uh, reaching operational standards. <clears throat> it's not a surprise to you that the data policy uh, will be to, to, make, to allow free and open access to this data. Um, and this is a list of the data products that will make available um, as soon as uh, possible. Now, this is a list of parameters, again, for those who are interested in looking into it, and I don't expect you to read them. Uh, what I would say is that for ocean um, variables, we have taken a bit of a guess with what users might want, uh, and we haven't had much progress on that. So my hope was to come here and try to find out a bit more about what users want from ocean models in long-range forecasts and try to improve our offering on that. Currently, you can see on our website some graphical products for the variables listed on the left. Um, the, the website link is, is at the bottom of the, of the slide. Um, we provide um, indices, time series of indices for an ensemble mode. We provide um, maps with multi-model combinations. And indeed, the individual um, components as well can be seen, as you can see on the left-hand side. Um, and we have been uh, producing these, and are disp we display them there since October 2016. I think I need to stop here. Um, but I'll leave up the list of the configuration of the models that our providers are using or will be using uh, in the operational phase, just in case you want to see it. <laughs>